Hello everyone, my name is Tim Harrigan. I will present Module 5 of the Appropriate Scale Mechanization for Smallholder Farmers online course on weed control. The learning objectives for this module are to understand the following. How weeds compete with crops. The importance of the difference in the height of the crop and the weeds in mechanical weed control. Early weed control options. Post-planting weed control options. And precision weed control options such as finger weeders and basket weeders. Weeds are unwanted plants that compete with the intended crop for water, nutrients, and sunlight. Uncontrolled weeds reduce crop yield, and some are toxic to livestock. Some weeds are a host for diseases, insects, and other pests that damage the desired crop. In cropping systems, weeds create a significant labor and economic burden for smallholder farmers. Weeds do have some beneficial effects. They form a vegetative cover protecting the soil from erosion. Weeds contribute to biodiversity, which may benefit soil biology and a balance of pests and pathogens. Weed control starts with seedbed preparation. Weeds compete for crop nutrients, but you cannot simply apply extra fertilizer to offset the damage from the weeds because the weeds will also benefit. In dry years, competition for water will reduce maize yields. Weeds also compete for sunlight. Weeds that start early are the most damaging to grain yields because they compete throughout the entire season. Weeds that start after the last cultivation are less harmful because they only compete for part of the season. Weeds compete with crops for nutrients, water, and light. The graph shows the importance of early weed control in a maize crop. Good weed control in the first five weeks is crucial. Allowing weeds to grow for only two weeks reduce grain yields by 700 kg per hectare compared to a clean tilled field. The grain loss was 1400 kg per hectare when weeds were allowed to grow for five weeks. When weeds are only 15 to 20 centimeters tall, they have already reduced grain yield. Striga is a parasitic weed and pathogen of cereal crops in Sub-Saharan Africa. Striga species parasitize most cereals, including maize, millet, sorghum, and rice. Germination only occurs in the presence of a suitable host. Following germination, striga attaches to the host and siphons out nutrients. 50 million hectares and 300 million farmers are affected by this weed in Africa, with losses totaling 7 billion U.S. dollars. Most Cuscuta is in East Africa. Germinating Cuscuta seeds attach to an appropriate host within three to five days of germination and siphon water and nutrients from the host. Weed competition varies with the crop grown, row spacing, weed species, density, and the timing of weed emergence relative to crop emergence and environmental conditions. Weeds that emerge before or with the crop are the most competitive. The best time to uproot weeds 
is when they are very small in the cotyledon or white thread stage before they establish a root system. A moldboard plow is for early season weed control and seedbed preparation. While tillage can control weeds and loosen the soil to enable planting, a long-term intensive tillage with a moldboard plow has degraded soils rather than improved soil quality and health. Plowing loosens the soil and buries crop residues. Excess oxygen injection accelerates the humus oxidation and degrades organic matter. Close contact between crop residues, soil microorganisms, moisture, and oxygen stimulates rapid decay that quickly consumes new organic matter. Conservation tillage, especially no-till, concentrates organic matter in the top few centimeters of the soil, improving water infiltration, reducing crusting and erosion, and making nutrients available where the roots are most numerous. The Senegalese farmer on the right uses a long-handled hoe with a unique design to loosen and aerate the soil for early season weed control and planting. You can find many clever modifications of hand tools to match local crop and soil conditions. Weeding with hand tools is time and labor intensive so farmers can only manage small plots in a timely fashion. Row crops are cultivated with hand tools, animal-drawn implements, and two-wheel and four-wheel tractors. Chopping hoes for weed control are wider and lighter than hoes used for tillage or planting. In many cases, chopping hoes are replaced by lighter pushing or pulling tools that are faster and require less effort. Pulling hoes are drawn through the soil without being lifted. A long handle allows work standing rather than stooped over. Pulling hoes have a working width of 10 to 30 centimeters. Delaying early season weed control allows weeds to develop large and firmly established root systems. Uprooting small weeds is tedious, but it is not difficult. When weeds are large, control is difficult, and very aggressive action is needed. This field cultivator with s shanks, followed by two rows of rolling baskets, provides full-width weed control, loosens and levels the soil, and early season weed control before planting a sugar beet crop. Intensively tilled soil such as this is subject to soil degradation and compaction from raindrop impact before and after planting. Additional tillage after rainfall may be needed to break up a crusted soil surface. Moldboard plowing for seedbed preparation and early weed control is common in Burkina Faso. The problem was that feed was in short supply at the end of the dry season, and animals were in poor physical condition for plowing, which limited their productivity. We worked with local blacksmiths to build low crown, low pitch sweeps for, for full row root cutting at a shallow depth to improve weed control and ease animal burden. The sweeps undercut weeds about five centimeters deep while lifting and shattering less soil than the old style high crown sweeps. Here, the sweeps replace the moldboard plow, uproot weeds, and level the ground for planting. The new sweeps 
provided full width weed control in less than one half the time needed for plowing. The cultivator was also more stable and easier for the farmer to operate. The cultivator draft or pulling force averaged 73 kilograms force compared to 93 kilogram force with the 20 centimeter moldboard plow. The best soil management is the least amount of tillage needed to grow the crop. A good practice is to reduce the tillage intensity and frequency. Conservation tillage implements replace the moldboard plow and retain protective crop residue on the soil surface. Strip tillage is a practice that prepares a well aerated zone for water infiltration, seed germination, and crop growth in a band of soil 15 to 30 centimeters wide. The image on the left is pre-plant tillage zones after an herbicide application to kill the weeds. The farmer uses an inline ripper on the right to create planting zones. Mechanical cultivation removes the weeds between the rows. A spike tooth harrow is a simple tool with vertical steel spikes that stirs the soil to a depth of 5 centimeters or less. An average draft or pulling force for this 35 spike harrow was 68 kilogram force or 2 kilogram force per spike. These vertical spikes will drag crop residue and quickly clog in residue covered fields. Some harrows will pull from one end with the spikes in the vertical position. Some harrows will pull from both directions, one direction with the spikes in the vertical position and with the spikes tilted away from the direction of travel in the opposite direction. Tilting the spike points away from the direction of travel allows the residue to roll under rather than be dragged along while still uprooting small weeds. The single gang disc is an aggressive tool that cuts, mixes, and levels the soil surface. The aggressive action of the discs makes it a suitable tool for weeds, even weeds as tall as 40 or 50 centimeters. A disc can incorporate maize stubble, terminate a cover crop, or run shallow with a reduced gang angle just before planting to kill small weeds. The spring tooth harrow is more aggressive than the spike tooth harrow, but not as aggressive as the disc. It provides some seedbed leveling after disking, but is most useful when run at depths less than five centimeters to break a crusted surface or uproot small weeds. This harrow will drag residue and is most effective in clean tilled fields. Most land preparation and planting for smallholder farmers in Africa is either by hand or animal power. About 2% of land cultivation in Sub-Saharan Africa is with mechanized power. Agriculture will continue to depend for many years on human and animal power. And mechanized power will emerge where it can, where conditions are supportive. On the left, a two-wheel tractor powers a weeding tool in a rice crop. On the right, a two-wheel tractor tills the soil with an S-tine cultivator with high crown sweeps, preparing the ground for maize planting. The rotary hoe is a toolbar with spider wheels on individual flexible shanks. It is popular for early season weed control. 
Soil preparation is 5 centimeters or less and is pulled at high speed over crops about 5 to 8 centimeters high. The whole wheels kick out pre-emergent cotyledon and white thread stage weeds without damaging the crop. Rotary hoes are effective at breaking crusted soil before and after crops emerge as long as the crop roots are more deeply rooted than the weeds. These are blind cultivation implements, which means that they run over the field without attention to the crop rows. Rotary hoes are generally for clean tilled or low residue fields, but they can work in fields with up to 50% residue cover as long as the teeth penetrate the soil surface. Some modifications for high residue conditions will be needed. Long handle hoes allow the weeds to be cut by pulling and pushing the tool below the soil surface. The long handle allows good maneuverability and tool reach in a tall row crop. These young girls are weeding maize in Burkina Faso with a short handle chopping hoe. Weeding is difficult and tedious work, often made more difficult than necessary when, they're, when the weeds are allowed to grow so large that very aggressive weeding is necessary. Inter-row cultivation destroys weeds, aerates the soil, and ridges up plants. Heavier tools are better in fine textured soil for weeding and aeration, and lighter ones on light soils to uproot weeds. Many soil engaging tools are available to accomplish tillage and weeding objectives. The tool's design affects the depth of penetration and the amount of soil movement. The more soil cut, lifted, and thrown, the greater the pulling force required to till the soil. The pitch of a sweep has a significant effect on pulling force and soil movement. As shown in the bottom left corner of the figure, a positive pitch occurs when the sweep's tip is lower than the heel. Normal sweep pitch ranges from 0 to 5 degrees when not under load. A sweep's pitch under load should be between 2 and 7 degrees. In Burkina Faso, five shank row cultivators are locally available and widely used for weed control. The farmer identified two major problems with the local cultivator. One, it quickly plugged with crop residue, and two, the draft was too high. He removed two of the five shanks to reduce residue plugging, but this reduced full width root cutting and weed control. He then ran the three shank cultivator deeper to increase the volume of soil thrown to bury uncut weeds but increasing the depth of cultivation increased the average draft to 93 kilograms force, a pulling force equivalent to his 20 centimeter moldboard plow. To improve weed control and ease the animal burden, we worked with local blacksmiths to build low crown, low pitch sweeps for full row root cutting at a shallow depth. The sweeps undercut weeds about five centimeters deep while lifting and shattering less soil than the old style high crown sweeps. The new sweeps reduced hand labor by providing full width weed control. The cultivator was also more stable and easier for the farmer to operate. The cultivator draft averaged 73 kg force compared to 93 kg force with the high crown sweeps. 
The new sweeps increased effective root cutting width by 20% while reducing the draft and animal burden by 22%. These single horse powered cultivators with three closely spaced narrow high crown sweeps are common in the peanut basin of Senegal. The goat manure covering the surface is a nutrient source for the following crop. Expandable variable width hose for row crops are used for inter-row cultivation and weeding. Single row models steer with handles at the rear. An adjustable front wheel controls the depth. While the width is variable, straight and evenly spaced rows are helpful. This over-the-row cultivator has pairs of beet knives for close cultivation and clean residue-free fields. A long, flat, vertical plate runs parallel to the row to protect the crop from thrown soil. A thin, flat sweep cuts and uproots weeds in the row middle. Trailing the beet knives are standard cultivator shovels for additional inter-row tillage to separate soil from the plant roots. Wavy, stabilizing coulters follow to prevent side-to-side -side lateral movement of the cultivator. This over-the-row cultivator has disc hillers that shave weeds away from small crop plants in the size of ridges. They can also be angled to push the soil back into the row to cover weeds. Use disc hillers cautiously. The discs can prune crop roots in later cultivations if they run too deeply or too close to the row. Notice the sweep following the cutaway discs to uproot weeds between the rows. This over-the-row cultivator has disc killers that can shave weeds away from small crop plants and the size of ridges. They can also be angled to push the soil back into the row to cover weeds. Rolling shields mounted as a pair over the row are notched on edge to rotate and roll over crop residue. Row shields are required when cultivating small crops to prevent burying the plants with soil. Rolling shields are very effective in fields with crop residue because they roll over rather than drag the residue. Rolling cultivators till the soil with gangs of spiders. They are most effective in clean tilled fields or with little residue. The spider gangs adjust to move soil toward or away from the row, work well with other weeding tools, and will tilt to match the size of raised beds or for building ridges. Rolling cultivators run close to the crop and work well in crops up to 25 centimeters tall. Cultivators used in no-till and residue-covered fields must allow crop residue to flow through the implement without clogging. Untilled fields require greater penetration force compared to tilled fields. These cultivators have heavy shanks, toolbar frames, and other components for tool penetration. Down pressure springs transfer weight from the toolbar to the individual row units. High residue cultivators have a single shank with a wide sweep and a coulter in front of the shank to cut the residue and reduce plugging. Some cultivators have discs to uproot weeds next to the row. You operate the sweep deep enough to keep soil moving over the sweep and around the shank to avoid plugging. Running the sweep too deep 
causes soil slabbing and poor weed control because the roots do not separate from the soil clods. A basket weeder works well for the first cultivation or preparing a stale seedbed for planting. It tills the top two to three centimeters of soil, breaking a crust and flicking small weeds in the white thread or cotyledon stage out of the soil to desiccate and die. Shallow cultivation avoids bringing up new weed seeds. This weeder does not hill up soil next to the row so that you can go right next to the row in a newly seeded crop. The baskets are ground driven. The front basket engages the soil, breaking it up before the rear basket. With the large sprocket on the front and the small sprocket on the rear, the rear basket turns faster than the front, accelerating the wires and throwing out the weeds. The front basket runs about two to three centimeters deeper than the rear basket. Spiders loosen soil and dislodge weeds near the row. The tool is ground driven with offset teeth mounted on a hub. A spider has jagged teeth that can throw soil toward the crop row to bury weeds or set to pull the soil away from the row. They work in pairs and can be adjusted inward or outward depending on the crop's growth stage. Spiders are versatile tools it can work alone or ahead of in-row weeding tools such as S-tine finger weeders or form beds on the edge of plastic ground cover. Gangs of four or five spider wheels loosen and move soil between the rows while finger weeders dislodge small weeds between the plants in the row. Spider gangs move soil parallel to the crop rows or adjust to throwing soil toward or away from the row. Spider gangs work similarly to rolling cultivator wheels. Here, spider gangs have replaced the front gang of a basket weeder. Spider gangs break a crusted soil surface more aggressively than the front gang of a basket weeder and may work better in stony ground. The Flex Tine Weeder is a blind cultivation tool, meaning that the weeder covers the entire width of the harrow without regard to the crop rows. Flex tine weeders scratch the surface to uproot small weeds at the white thread stage just as the roots develop. The spring wire tine basing varies from 2.5 to 7.5 centimeters and the number of rows varies. This harrow works best on annual weeds that emerge from seeds each year. The flex tines do not work well in perennial and grass crops with well established root systems. Tine vibration is crucial for effective weed removal. An operating speed of 6 to 12 kilometers per hour is best for good tine vibration. Harrows with longer, thinner tines provide more vibration and are suitable for slower travel speeds. It works best on dry, sandy, and loamy soils and is not a good choice for wet or fine textured clay soils because the tines will not vibrate effectively. The soil surface should be level for uniform tine action and the tines should run about 6 to 12 millimeters deep as shallowly as possible. Management and adjustment for soil and crop conditions are crucial. When set correctly, the vibrating tines vibrate rapidly, breaking up a soil crust, shattering small clods, and dislodging small weeds. 
They work best in loose or lightly crusted soil with no crop residue. Use the flex time before the emergence of large seeded crops, such as maize, beans, and potato, and then after the emergence. After emergence, the crop must be well rooted before cultivation. Repeat cultivation every five to seven days until the crop is 10 to 15 centimeters tall. A finger weeder is an in-row tool targeting weeds between plants in the row, usually in horticultural crops, but suitable for large seeded crops such as maize. Flexible fingers driven by steel tines below each unit uproot or bury small weeds near the crop row. A size difference between the crop and the weed is important. Finger weeders are most easily used in transplanted crops once the roots have anchored the crop. If the crop is tall, hilling to bury small weeds is a good approach. If your crop has stronger roots than the weeds, setting the fingers to uproot small weeds also works well. If weeds germinate simultaneously with the crop, it will be difficult to uproot or bury the weeds without uprooting or burying the crop. A large seeded crop like corn, beans, or squash is usually well rooted and emerges quickly enough to uproot weeds at the white thread or cotyledon stage. The machine setup and calibration for specific conditions are crucial. Conditions vary widely based on the crop, weed pressure, soil type, and so on. The best conditions are a level field with uniform soil moisture, not too wet. Combining finger weeders with other weeders is often more effective than just the finger weeder alone. Many growers will use a flex tine just before the large seeded crop emerges. Then use the flex tine again five to 10 days after emergence when the crop is well established. And then use the finger weeder on the next pass. Finger weeders are not high speed tools. Smaller diameter tine units will rotate the fingers faster, which may be helpful with walk behind, animal drawn, or two wheel drive tractor drawn finger weeders. Summary and conclusions. Weeds are plants that grow where they are not wanted. Weeds compete with crops for nutrients, water, and light. Weeds that emerge before or with the crop are the most competitive. Weeds that start early in the season are most harmful because they compete throughout the entire season. Weeds that start after the last cultivation are less harmful to grain yields because they only compete for part of the season. Success with weed control depends on a height difference between the crop and the weeds. Weeding with hand tools is time and labor intensive, and farmers can only manage small plots in a timely fashion. Row crops can be cultivated with hand tools, animal drawn implements, and two wheel and four wheel tractors. A disc, spike tooth, and spring tooth harrow are effective pre-plant weed control options. A rotary hoe and flex tine harrow are blind cultivation tools effective before and after planting when the timing and plant height differential permit. Cutaway discs, spiders, and rolling shields facilitate weed removal near the row. Precision tools, such as the basket and finger weeder, are effective early when the weeds are in the white thread or cotyledon stage.